Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're all keeping safe. Now, sorry I haven't put any uh, videos up for quite a while. I've been having to do this unfortunate thing called work. Uh, it's really been getting in the way of me doing some, some stuff I want to do. Uh, so hopefully now we've got, got a bit of spare time and I wanted to continue on with my uh, Extensibility 101 uh, video series. So in the first part of this series we looked at you know what it is, how it worked, uh, its evolution from VRA 7 to 8 uh, and the additional features and capabilities that uh, 8 now has. What I'm also going to cover today though is, okay we, we did functions last time with ABX, let's have a look at good old fashioned VRO and there's a, there's a couple of um, little uh, tips, and, tips and tricks here uh, to be able to actually get it to work. So, uh, under uh, VRO, let's have a look at the the actual workflow here that we're going to use. Now, I had a comment under one of the Blueprinting 101 about how to add uh, notes uh, in the annotations within vSphere. Not something I commonly do anymore um, since tags uh, are now you know, multi-cloud and, and prevalent across all. I want to make, you know, I don't generally use that, but I thought, hey, let's do that as part of um, this particular video, right? And, you know, they're still useful. They still have a lot of information and, you know, a lot of organizations I know still use uh, the annotations there. So let's have a look. We've got our Vero demo here uh, that I'm going to be running. And the first thing that we need to actually have a look at is the inputs. So, the input name must be input properties, right? If you use anything else, I've used payload and other things, it doesn't work. It has to be input properties. Uh, unlike VRA7, where all it needed to be was a prop type properties as the input and it would automatically uh, use that particular property. Um, now, it has to be this, but it can be either properties or uh, string. That's the one. Wow. Uh, it's a Monday. So we got the, if we have a look at the runs, now I just want to look at a couple of test runs that I was doing previously just to make sure I wasn't going to be telling any fibs. Now if we look at uh, the variables here that was kicked off, now we'll see all these underscore underscores. These are all additional properties that we can actually use, uh, details on them. And I will actually use one which is the um, uh, the name, the username here, this one, I'll use that. Uh, but the input properties we can see is input properties, it's type string, and we can see it's just a stringified um, object, right? Awesome. So you can take that as an input if you want to, or you can have it as an actual properties, and we'll have a look at this one here, which if we look at our variables again, we've got all our normal properties, but then we've got input properties of type properties, now under eight, we can actually browse these, uh, which is awesome. Under seven, you couldn't. It was literally just a, a string you could view, um, but you couldn't actually view it all. You'd have to copy and paste it out. Um, those days are over, but we can see, um, we've got external IDs, zero. We can see tags, uh, which is type properties in here, or resource name, there's the name of the computer. That's the one I'm gonna be using in this instance. We can see custom properties are all in there. And we just use these as, a, as any um, JSON object. Right, so if we have a look at what I have in the workflow, go back here, we've got input type properties. Now if you look at the schema, now the first one I'm going to do is I want to get the VM. So I'm going to deploy, this is purely only for vSphere, uh, I want to deploy, uh, or not deploy, I want to be able to get the actual VM object in vSphere. So within this, I'm just using a very simple, uh, I'm putting the input as those input properties, and I've got an output called VM object, which is the VC virtual machine object. So what I'm gonna do is obviously take those input properties uh, and get the resource name and get the first one, because there's only gonna be one, because uh, that's a that's an array type. Uh, and then I'm going to use uh, a get all virtual machines. So I wanna use the VC plugin, to go and grab all virtual machines and I'm going to input the name as my search parameter. Now obviously this is, you know, I wouldn't use this straight up in an enterprise environment, uh, especially if your naming convention may somehow, if you have a, you create something with a short name, there may be a machine with a longer name 
that has that same portion, it's going to return multiple objects. So you're going to have to handle that. Plus, there's probably there's better ways you can actually search directly on the V centers and other things like that. Uh, that's a that's a VRO one. I won't get into that uh, today. Uh, I log that out, and then I also I assign that output of the VC virtual machine to the VM that I've found. Yep. Then I take my second one, which is I want to set the notes, right? So under the scripting, we can see that I'm taking the, that virtual machine in uh, that I wanted, uh, as well as the uh, input properties that came from v, uh, VRA as well. And you can see here that I'm actually assigning the user, if I use the system.getContext.getParameter, and I want to use that parameter, I'll get the value um, of that particular uh, variable that's been passed. That's my, that's the name. I'm then going to sign a description as just a string using my user, uh, and then I'm going to do a new config spec, and I'm going to reconfigure the VM task. Right? Very very simple 101 uh, VRO VSP stuff, uh, and that should work. Right? So let's give it a go. So let's go to our uh, VRA. If we look at subscriptions, so I want to create a new subscription. Uh, do I have Vero Extensibility 101 there? Uh, I want to create a topic, so I want post machine provisioned because I want that machine to be existing, uh, obviously. So this is where the life cycles and that come in handy because I want to put in notes on the machine. I need that machine to be there, right? So I may as well wait till post, uh, post deployment. Let's set a condition. I don't want to run this for everything. So this because this is for vSphere only, you should typically only you would have a condition in there just for vSphere because this will not work if you deploy to AWS you deploy to Azure, right? Uh, because those VM contexts is using the VM plugin, the vSphere plugin or the vCenter plugin in VRO. So let's have a look at this. Let's just do one for me, event uh, dot data dot um, custom properties dot VRO. So that's um, one that I already had in there, but I could also do event uh, dot data dot dot uh, platform. So both those have to be true. Um, go, yep. I want to add the VRO. So let's change this to VRO workflows. I want those ones. Now I've got two there. Let's make sure. I think it's the first one should be fine. Actually, it doesn't matter because one's just a copy of another. Uh, just when I was playing around anyway. That's why they're just under different folders but have the same name. So watch out for that. Uh, and then we, I don't need to block this execution. I'm not adding anything to it. So I'm just going to fire and forget. Uh, and I want this to go to any properties call any project. All right, let's save that. Oh, what's it complaining about? Oh, yeah. Thank you. There we go. Okay, that's enabled. Let's uh, go to our design. Put the platform in there. I'll just hard code that. Obviously, you wouldn't probably hard code it. Uh, close. Actually, I just want to make sure I probably, without even realizing it. Oh no, I used all lowercase. That's probably naughty, but I'll leave that as it is. And okay, that should be right to go. Let's um, let's deploy this off. Yep. Oh. I just like 
things being neat. Let's deploy. All this uh, zero. Deploy. All right. Now we sit in wait. Fingers crossed. It all works. All right. Okay, so that is done. Let's uh, see if it executed for one. So let's go to extensibility. Uh, we can go to workflow runs. There it is. Run ID. We can see the output of Vero, which is really cool. We can actually have a look at the input properties uh, that it comes with and all the other additional metadata that's there. But if we go to Orchestrator, we'll be able to actually have a look. I'll just click on all runs there. See these latest ones, and you can see the executor. So the executor is started by the Vero gateway. Uh, we have a look at this. We can see that it took, you know, it took uh, 204 milliseconds to find the VM here. Uh, we'll have a look at the variables. Uh, we can see that the VM object is this VC virtual machine. Uh, it's been able to find that. Uh, the input properties. Okay, so it looked like everything worked. Let's go and check out the machine and see if those notes are there. Okay, so that was 7.24, yeah. Uh, let's just go to the deployments. Yep, 7.24. Okay, summary. Yep, no tools. Notes. There it is. Oh, I need a space there, but I've been able to add very, very easily uh, to the notes using extensibility in Vero um, with literally 10 lines of code. Um, awesome. So, hope I'll leave that there, make it a nice quick video. Uh, as you can see, if you do, if you have used VRA extensibility in VRA 7, um, the payload's very different. Uh, so what I'd generally recommend, and I actually get asked this a lot, is if you want to reuse, and you probably have a ton of stuff you'd want to reuse, and most of it is still valid, you just want to put almost like a, a, a workflow shim or another thing in the way, which will take the existing payloads and just convert it to what the workflows are gonna be expecting uh, with the right values and everything else, right? So that's what I generally recommend and then that's something that you can just add in, you can just reuse and add in front of all your um, your actual workflows. And then you make a lot of reuse out of that. So hope you enjoyed, uh, come back next time. Uh, we'll talk, uh, we'll start diving a bit more into some more advanced ABX. Until then, stay safe, see you next time. Cheers, bye.